Okay, so let's make a new project. Uh, so what should we call this? Uh, May 20 um, 3D kit one. If I haven't done that already. Okay, so we're just going to create an empty project. We're going to use my workflow. <clears throat> I'm going to use my workflow to add my uh, GUI Mark 1. Uh, we're going to import them in and we're going to try and get going as fast as possible. So then we're going to <clears throat> We're going to have a look at the 3D game kit lights. So, right, let's do this. Uh, so, I've talked you through in previous things a new workflow, and then you save it as a package so you can just import it, which is what I'm going to do now. Uh, is it here? Workflow 2 pop. Right, this is going to have a load of dependencies that we're going to have to. Um, fix. So the main ones that spring to mind are Cinemachine, Post Processing, Google Resonance, Pro Builder and Polybrush. And I'm going to show you how to get the most out of Pro Builder and Polybrush. Which are actually pretty good once you get around the fact that they're a little bit, uh, what's the word, fragile. I've also included the 3D game controller light, but this is only for my personal use, so I'm allowed to do this. But the thing is, because I've done that, I can't distribute this one. I could actually, no, <clears throat> I was just thinking I could, I, ca I can't distribute my workflow because it's got, not only has it got Invector, it's got Envira Spawn in there, although they said I could use that. Uh, easy loading screens in there or will be um, again I can distribute that um, what are the other ones that I can't oh it's, uh, 3d game kit light <coughs> which I'd need permission to um, it should be nice if they did but I don't, I don't know if Unity would So I haven't heard back from Invector and I haven't even bothered trying to ask Unity, they just freak out because I asked them if I could include it as a package. They'll probably try to deprecate it as I speak. Well it already is deprecated because it's abandoned. But we are going to plunder the 3D game kit light for every uh, scintilla of um, of knowledge that we can get out of it because it's really got some lovely features so we're going to look take the best we can out of 3d game kit light uh, to make a, you know some cool functionality for a game and like I say the reason I'm going into third person world is because it's the step towards first person multiplayer because if you think about first person multiplayer and your opponents they're all got characters it's not just you got to have the I'd like to have two controllers okay so we've imported that we've got all sorts of errors down the bottom we're not going to look at them for now we are going to import the GUI so import package custom package I should put it in here. So I'm going to Unity UI. I'm going to copy that and put it into my lessons there. This one I think I can distribute and will. GUI one package open. So now we're importing the UI framework that I that we spent a bit while in, and this is just a framework for a game and. The joy of making it into a package like this is we don't have to think about it. We just import it, and once it's uh, once I've sorted out the errors, we can just get up and going. And all the scenes are there; they're all linked together. They've all got their um, oh, 
talk to the glitch we need to do the build settings so build settings select all the scenes from the scene menu put it in there and the ones that we need to make sure work for one two and three need to be in seven we need to be scene one two seven scene two this is because of uh, the the loading bar thing it uses numbers so we've got to make them seven eight nine so that's all the scenes all ready to go but we've got all these errors so let's get rid of the errors so package manager right here we go into package manager type in sign sign for city machine the city machine is all the camera work and that's all going to be installed for us we install that So I've installed Cine Machine. Install post processing. And this is going to be really, really cool once we get past all this stuff. But this is just fixing all the broken dependencies. So we've installed our workflow two. We've installed the GUI. Uh, now we've we're reinstalling Cine Machine. Now post processing and Google Resonance. And Google Resonance is some sort of sound thing that's got some dependencies in 3D Game Kit Lite. This one. If we put some time in, we could probably wrench out the dependencies for Google. Uh, and I will probably have to do that when everyone switches to 2020. But because they're getting ready to deplicate it out of the, of the engine. But any version of 2019, it should this all should work. <clears throat> 2020, when 2020 becomes standard, I'll do a critical update and show you how to rip out Google resonance so next thing is google google resonance is stuff that never really caught on vr google vr with daydream and cardboard uh i kind of understand why they would drop it but at the same time you should not build it into an integral part of your trading materials in my opinion so we should find some curation to get rid of it so that was Cine Machine post processing and Google Resonance and now um, Pro Builder and Pro Builder allows us to build things, it's pretty cool. So we'll install that. I'm just wondering if we should put the examples in. I'm not going to bother with examples, so we could try them, I suppose. Now, yeah, Pro Builder allows us to build meshes and play with meshes, and then the other one is. Uh, Poibush and once you get your head around them they're actually very cool and free but again they're also, oh no they're, they're still getting a bit of love good 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 <laughs> they're not abandoned yet So that was Pro Builder and then Polybrush and Polybrush we are going to include the samples. And another thing is if we get a load of problems, one thing we can do is remove these packages and then reinstall them. That can sometimes help fix things that are persistently bad. But anyway, Polybrush. This time we are including the standard Shader examples, we've got to install it first. This is Polybrush, and the shader examples are really good. I would like, love to figure out how to do that in Shader Forge, so that would be cool. Right. Let's see what problems we've got. And yeah, so we're going to use every bit of knowledge we can out of um, 3D game kit light and then 
we are going to try and integrate it into standard physics world using Invector. Um, and we may we may move on from Invector to something else. So we've got the shader examples there, polybrush, done, done, done. So it's right now let's hit play. It's still just a sample scene. Right, all the errors have disappeared. Hopefully you're in a similar situation. And we've got all sorts of new things up here. Uh, export to object is quite handy. So um, what to do next? Okay, I'm gonna talk you through the should I do that for another video? I think this is that's this video done because just setting up and getting it all working. The only thing I will do is show you kit tools, create new scene, uh, test one. So this creates a scene, creates a blank scene. If this is purple, then you probably need to install uh, Polybrush uh, or Pro Tool, uh, Pro Builder. Right, we hit play. So what we've done in one button, click a thingy. And we've got Ellen. We've got a control system, although I've noticed my mouse isn't working. Yet. So that'll be a silly machine problem. Uh, button pause. Right, so. Check layers. Ellen. the layers have been wiped out so to get these layers working properly what I would do now good job I did check this is go to asset store move the asset store over here and we're going to re-import the 3d game kit and overwrite the layers Okay, and again, this is going to be a bit of a minefield as well. Okay, so 3D game kit, 3D game kit. Uh, we've got one too many. Game kit light, go. Import, import. So that's going to set up the layers for us <clears throat> and fix any problems. Uh, but we don't want to update the no we don't want to we want to skip this one because those dependencies we just spent a lot we just imported all the good ones we'll import that and hopefully that will have written proper layers for us and luckily enough uh, Invector uses tag system so we don't have to worry too much about layers, although we do have to worry about the default layer. Invector is not without its flaws, although I go on about it. It's only because it was a free, uh, you get a free version. If they didn't have a free version, I wouldn't be doing this. And also their, their climb is pretty good. Their free climb is, is decent enough. <clears throat> Because one of the first things you're going to want to do with this stuff is add free climb. Uh, well, a form of climbing. Climbing is just so cool. But even with the vector stuff, they don't have the bit at the end where you get up, you climb up, and then get yourself standing up. Anyway, so what we're doing now. We are reinstalling the 3D game kit Lite. Uh, that environment looks interesting. I wonder if it has bridges in it. I should check that out. Um, so, minimize that, close it. Close, hit play, and hopefully it fixes these bugs. Oh. Yes, now we've got working camera. And uh, really, the settings on this camera we can take out and use as a prefab. Um, but having a decent Cinemachine allows you to have very cool 
camera system. Right, uh, but um, you know, uh, you should have it out of the box. It should give this functionality, in my opinion, because it's quite hard, especially if you're on a uh, time budget to get a cinema machine to behave itself. Anyway, so the next thing is that oh, left and right, although the animations are cool, it's all a bit clunky. For example, if you try to walk, oh, I'll show you actually. If you try and walk along one one unit of things, it's alright when you line it up perfectly, but it's really easy for it to just skip over a bit. So you, I'll come to that in a bit, but you get you have to <clears throat> because this control system isn't as fine tuned as I personally like. We we have to build around that by building bigger wider corridors and bridges anyway so we've got this this is great uh, and um, we're gonna what we're gonna do is we're going to add an acid pool a doorway and a moving platform and we're gonna play around with poly brush and pro builder but that's that's for our next lesson it really is and we also when you hit escape, it gives you to a, a little menu you can, there where you can quit. So we've got a death volume, we'll double click that, and we need to change that from a death volume into a teleport back to home volume, because killing people is a bit grim, if, especially if it's up, if they've fallen through this, the terrain, um, because of something we've done. We've got gamer rig, we've got, none of this is in well, very few of it's in child objects, which is interesting. Uh, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to change this plane uh, into an object. I'm pretty sure out of the box it just freaks out. So we've got to export it as an object and bring it back in. And that's the ground plane. Uh, the menu is quite interesting but complicated. We've got a health canvas, is interesting, we've got checkpoints. Checkpoint system, which is just where they respawn, and uh, we've got a few lights, and we've got some empty objects just to put little comments in. And like I say, next lesson we're going to put in an acid pool, a bridge, a moving platform, and a door and a switch, and um, to get us going. And if you have got access to Unity Learn, go look up 3D Game Kit Light, and it's all documented for you how to do all this. But uh, what I will be doing is showing a, a smoother pathway through it, and we're going to go through it, learn it all, uh, and then we're going to move on from it and make it even better with the vector and other third-party controllers and stuff. Okay, so that's enough for this lesson.